Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our webinar is about to begin. Thank you very much for preparing yourself to join our webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Muhammad Nasrin bin Kamal Abdul Nasir, the moderator of today's webinar. I'm very pleased to see you here and welcome all of you to this cardiac MRI, What You Need to Know webinar. This webinar is conducted by Medical Imaging Department, Faculty of Health Sciences, Masai University. Firstly, I would like to brief you about medical imaging course. There are diploma and bachelor degree honors accredited by MQA. You can get more information by searching www.masa.edu.my or our faculty social media. This webinar will discuss about the awareness of using MRI diagnosis on heart-related disease. Ladies and gentlemen, this speaker, the speaker today is uh, Ms. Manasantini Krishnan. Hi, everyone. Okay, hi, Ms. Mona. Hello. Uh, she has a bachelor degree in medical imaging honors, a student of uh, Masai University. She has worked at KPJ Ipoh Specialist Hospital for four years and currently working at Quantan Medical, Quantan Medical Center as a radiographer. Before the presentation begins, let's know the regulation on how the presentation will be going on. Firstly, I would like to give uh, Ms. the time to Ms. Mona Santini to present the benefit material for about 45 minutes. I would like to remind the audience, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box and please complete the survey form for our quality survey and in order to receive the e-certificate. The e now, allow me to welcome the speaker, Her Excellency, Ms. Mona Santini, to, de to deliver her presentation. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Mona Santini. Okay, uh, hi everyone. Okay, so uh, today our topic will be uh, cardiac MRI. So what do you need to know? Okay, first, uh, when we talk about radiology, usually we know that it involves radiation. So especially when we say um, x-ray department, everybody was very scared. They will go for like... Uh, they will tell that, oh, it's radiation and all those things. But this one today, I want to talk about MRI scan, which MRI scan, we don't use any radiation. We only use a radio wave. That radio wave will create a data and the data then soon be processed uh, into the computer. So we can see your cardiac image, images inside the computer. Okay, so this is the difference uh, imaging texts that I would like to uh, explain to you. Okay, uh, firstly about radiation, x-ray. Okay, the normal x-ray is only 2D. So uh, in the normal x-ray, we only can see uh, your size of your heart, whether it's enlarged or it's uh, smaller than normal size and all those things. We really cannot indicate what's happening inside your cardio, your cardio, your cardia, your heart. And then um, we go for CT scan. Okay. Last time, uh, doctors, a consultant, they lo love to use CT scan, especially on cardiac. Because they say uh, cardiac angiography of uh, CT scan is uh, can get a clear image. Effect that can cause uh, doctors uh, saw the 
uh, the diagnosis and then doctor can say, oh, it's a, a stenosis over there, but it's actually not a stenosis because of your breathing instruction. You are not following the breathing instruction correctly. So uh, comes to uh, echocardiogram. That means uh, it's like ultrasound of the heart. Okay, ultrasound of the heart, it's... Uh, Last time, it's a gold standard to detect any wolf injury or any wolf abnormalities and all those things. But uh, now it's reducing because now we are introducing MRI cardia, which is uh, you don't need to do anything. You just have to lie down over there and then uh, we will scan you uh, through MRI and it's a very simple procedure. So uh, nowadays, every that most of the uh, hospital they are practicing for MRI cardia. Okay, so uh, why MRI cardia? Oh, uh, this is the slide I want to show you all that we can see the MRI cardia, how the MRI cardia images and CT scan images. Okay, and also ultrasound. And then, okay, so uh, when we compare into ultrasound of cardio, compared to MRI. Okay, uh, this is the research that has been done in 1999. So they uh, told us that sensitivity and spe uh, specificity of the MRIs is uh, more higher compared to the cardio uh, and uh, cardio ultrasound. Okay, so... M and anatomy so this is the normal um heart diagram so as we can see we have four chambers right atrium left atrium uh right ventricle and left ventricle so uh, this is uh the we know the blue color is deoxygenated uh, blood and the red is oxygenated blood Okay, so as we know, uh, right atrium, they will uh, receive the deoxygenated uh, blood from SVC and IVC. Uh, SVC is superior vena cava, IVC is inferior vena cava and coronary sinus. Okay, right ventricle, okay, uh, ventricles usually they have a very, uh, the muscles will be thick, okay, because they are really working hard over there. It's a high pressure, they will give high pressure. So, uh, they will... Uh, they are from uh, right ventricular um, to pulmonary trunk, okay. So uh, this is the diagram that uh, everyone can be seen over here. So right atrium, right ventricle, and in between we have a valve, and then left atrium, left ventricle. Okay, so uh, this is briefly about the coronary circulation. Okay, so when it's come to heart, okay, everybody knows, especially when heart attack everything that happened in the heart mo mo mostly we are telling that it's because of the heart attack it's actually uh, not that way because there is a lot of uh, pathology that happening can be happens in your uh, heart so um, especially uh, you can uh, maybe you have some wolf problem something like that uh, usually a malaysian they live to say that uh, jantung berlubang and all those is uh, left circumflex we call it and left anterior descending okay in the right we have a right coronary uh, artery okay so this is the coronary circulation from iota it's to right coronary artery left coronary artery and marginal artery posterior ventricular artery that's all is from the right and from the left coronary artery circumflex and anterior in ventricular artery and then from the that and then go to the right atrium we got small cardiac vein middle cardiac vein coronary sinus and all those things okay so here i want to talk about common indication of okay cmr means a cardiac mri okay uh, before that mri is magnetic resonance imaging okay so the first four that uh, i highlighted in the red color it's heart failure coronary heart 
artery disease is the common, okay, ischemic heart disease, myocardial infarction, uh, non-ischemic, and this is the most common uh, indication that will happen in your cardiac. Okay, then we comes to valvular heart disease, cardiac masses, pericardial disease, congenital. Okay, congenital means uh, since you are born. That means it's um, you're born, you already have the disease. You already have the uh, pathology. Okay, so now uh, before I'm talking about my, uh, MRI and all those things, so uh, we all know uh, radiographer, we are not that uh, popular compared to nurses and doctors and pharmacies. We are a very small society that uh, working, actually we are frontliners also because it's all we, um, he requested for any pathology. So we are the one who diagnose, this means helping doctor to diagnose whether the pathology that doctor suspected, the disease that doctor suspected for you, is it, is it correct or not? So anything yes we is the patient preparation so um this is the three main thing usually we will uh, ask patient before the procedure okay first explanation okay we will explain to you how the process will go how the procedure so what can you be expected before during and after the procedure so and then second is informed consent okay consent is something that um we continue the study or not okay so uh, like for example after i explain to you or after consultant explain to you maybe you can say okay maybe next time so it's okay we can't force you because anyhow you will make the Yes. Okay. Before the procedures, what you you will uh, expect before the procedure? Uh, first, uh, no caffeine. Okay. As we know, caffeine sometimes they will dilate the uh, vessels and all those things. So no caffeine for twenty four hours. Okay. Caffeine is not only tea. Uh, it's not only coffee. Sorry. Prescribe it lah, uh, before the fast, fast for four hours. Okay, then uh, ECG uh, leads. ECG is the one, uh, you know, that we will patch a uh, lead patches in, in your legs, um, in your chest, uh, so that we can monitor your ECG. Uh, a wave and then in performance okay uh and then another thing is creatinine okay creatinine is very important especially when uh um creatinine is because we usually take creatinine is a renal profile that's me kidney your we have to know whether your kidney is okay or not before we start the procedure this is because later on inside the mri we will give you some kind of dye okay the dye we call it contrast okay gadolinium base lah. so why we give the contrast is because to enhance your blood vessel inside the heart okay that is very important because if not everything will be look the same color gray color inside the uh, mri so we will insert you the gadolinium so that uh, you know 
and we know which is the vessel, which is the blocking and all those things. So for flush out, so we all know renal is the function of the renal for of the, our kidney is to flush out anything, waste product in our body. So that's why we call it creatinine. Okay, creatinine is something that uh, we will uh, take your blood test okay, before the procedure. So uh, we will see the, uh, whether your kidney is okay. They can uh, flush out the contrast or not. It's very important because once if your creatinine level, that means your kidney is not in a good shape, and then we insert you the contrast. Okay, the contrast is not much. Kidney damage. Two things. Adenosine is a medication which makes your coronary artery to dilate, to open. Like when you are doing exercise, okay, you feel like a lot, you, you have to inhale a lot of oxygen. Okay, same thing will happen over there. They will dilate your coronary arteries. So we know which one we can dilate, which one we cannot dilate. Okay, then uh, another one, uh, IV line is for the contrast. Okay, so this is about the adenosine. Okay, adenosine is a very common thing they will use for stress proficient imaging. That means anything for the coronary artery. So we will use adenosine. Okay, and adenosine only work for 10 seconds. It's very short half-life. That means every 10 seconds, the thing will reduce to half, reduce to half, and reduce to half. Okay, so during the procedure okay during the procedure what we can expect during the procedure okay you will lie down in a supine supine position that's mean it's like normal lying down you are facing up and the procedure will took around 90 to 2 hours yes it's the disadvantage is because it's longer time okay so it's also depends on your cardiac output okay if your cardiac output is normal and uh, is functioning well so we can reduce the time okay but the minimum is 90 minutes 90 minutes is doesn't mean that you are lying down there for 90 minutes it's only including the pro uh, the preparation before that's mean i explained to you you need to change and then i put the ecg led and all those things Okay, during the examination, I will give you song or you can, actually you can request song or I'll give you ear plugs because the magnetic, the magnet inside the, um, our gantry, we call it, the machine, have will create a very loud knocking sound. Okay, so another thing, before we start the procedure itself, we will give the instruction, we will ask you to exercise, to hold your breath like 15 to 20 seconds okay this will keep on repeating during the scans because we have like a uh, stress infusion and then we can we got a normal um normal timing for the cardiac okay so claustrophobic okay got everyone know claustrophobic is a phobia that's mean you are phobia to the closed places mean you cannot dark closed and congested place you will feel very claustrophobic okay so after the procedure what you can expect after the procedure okay so after the procedure nothing much you can eat and drink as usually usually we will um, um advise you to drink a more water so that you can hydrate your kidney your renal function so easily can wash out all the contrast inside your kidney inside your body okay so uh, for those esrf is end stage renal failure which means dialysis okay for dialysis patient usually we will uh do the procedure before the dialysis but they have to do the dialysis on the same time same day i mean like if this morning they did the mri so the afternoon itself they need to go for a dialysis because as i say uh gadonilium they have a contraindication it can it can damage your kidney if no proper uh proper uh, uh preparation 
Okay, so this is the side effect. Okay, some um, we can tell that uh, because of the loud sound, uh, loud sound inside the uh, gantry inside our MRI or something, they have like uh, they have like common headache, uh, cool sensation. Sometimes it's a hot flush, uh, chest heaviness. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I can't. it's we uh it's the informed consent that we will ask you the first thing we will ask you if you have any um allergic to any food okay uh, normally they will ask you you have any allergic to um a seafood or anything okay because the the gadolinium is about communication you have to tell the doctor you have to tell us whether you have any others um what we say allergic to drugs for example you can't take um uh, any painkiller if you take painkiller you have swelling eyes okay you have rashes you have to tell because there is a procedure we can do for the cover we will give you we call it prednisolone it's like a steroid types to cover all your uh in a contraindication for this uh, procedure before you attend the MRI cardiac. Okay, the second thing, of course, we will check the blood test whether okay or not. Okay, another thing for the asthmatic patient, the one uh, with mentholin, okay, uh, the one with, we call it like uh, palm, asthma palm and everything. If you frequently take the mentholin, okay, just please let us know because we also have a procedure to cover the thing before you attend the procedure because if not, there is a possibility all this thing will come back once we injected the contrast. Okay, but nothing to worry. There is a, a less possibility, but we don't want the possibility. heart and everything it's because it's in hand you no need to go undergo a big operation or anything you just have to lie down and then it's only one two iv lines set in your both arm and then it's very simple simple like without a, a high possibility for infection or aftercare or anything. Another thing is high detail resolution because in for anatomy, okay, because it the resolution that we can get from MRI is much more better than we are doing CT scan. Okay, so another thing, as I told you, ability to uh, demonstrate flow and function. Okay, this is because of your cardiac output. Okay, cardiac output is like your heart rate. Uh, whether your wife is functioning or not, uh, whether your heart can pump normally or not, it's all these things inside the flow and function of your cardiac output. Okay, another thing is that can we can view the image very rapidly. That means once you've done that, we can see, okay, what's your problem? Okay, we, we already know inside the uh, whether you have any problem or anything or not. And then another thing is a real-time imaging. That means your heart is pumping while we are taking the images. It's uh, very interesting. Like uh, we already know, oh, okay, now your heart is pumping, your pulmonary uh, valve is, your my, uh, mitral valve is uh, functioning well or not. Okay. Then, uh, like I say, it's non-invasive. That means no blade, no blood, no nothing actually. It's very safe.
very minimal procedure. Okay, no opening, chest opening, and all those things. Even if you go undergo under uh, uh, angiography, okay, angiogram, uh, cat, uh, you know, cat lab, we call it, okay. So, doctor will insert you the sheet, right? The sheet is much more bigger compared to our IV line. We'll only will use like uh, 20 G. It's all very, very small. It's normal, like um, when you are admitted, you know, you got one IV line in your hand, so they can insert the drugs inside your body. Okay, the same thing. Okay, then it's, of course, it's no radiation exposure. That's mean, even if you have problem, uh, uh, for example, you can't stay still for 90 minutes. Uh, surely, sometimes I also can stay still. Okay, so uh, you moved a bit. So, we no need to worry about, we need to repeat the exam. So it's like double exposure, radiation exposure or anything. Because this is no expo no radiation at all. So we can like freely uh, repeat it, the scan so you to get an optimal result. Okay. Yes. That's, as I told you, we need to prepare you. So the toxicity will become low. Okay. Okay, but as I told you, of course, there will be a everyone was thinking, oh, I need to lie down, stay still for two hours, or oh, this is ridiculous. Yes. Two hours. That is because we can uh, consider. For the burn and not real reliable, but uh, it can be done. Okay. Another thing is cost. Yes, MRI is very costly. Uh, it can it can like be like thou more than two thousand thousand. It's more costly than CT scan. Okay, another thing, uh, the more, uh, for example, the more specs, uh, we call it like more advanced research done, okay, we need to uh, develop, we need to upgrade our more, uh, our hardware and software. So sometimes there is a center, uh, they won't, they won't like upgrade it because uh, of course it's like a very big uh, budget for them to invest to get one software or hardware. Okay, so experts, operators, and readers. So as I told you, not everybody can read x-rays. Same, MRI, not everybody can read. Okay, only card radiologists, cardiologists, and normally uh, radiologists who already operate the MRI, they know what is happening inside your body, and they know how to perform this procedure so you don't have to worry okay so another thing patient have to be fairly uh, stable for example if you are suddenly while during the mri halfway you feel like you want to vomiting or you have uh, any sudden sudden cardiac arrest or anything we can't proceed the procedure we need to take you out and um, so uh, the thing will be halfway. So halfway, we can't read anything much from the procedure. Okay, so another thing, this is important thing, no pacemaker. Okay, pacemakers of peso wire. Okay, what is pacemaker? Pacemaker is a battery. In Uh, they are uh, uh, some are uh, already say that okay, uh, patient with pacemaker they can, of course, enter the MRI because no problem. Our pacemaker is MRI compatible. You know, they when you are doing pacemaker, there is an algorithm, okay, that we need to be synchronized, everything will be synchronized with your pumping, the heart pumping, okay. So, the thing we must have a, a cardiologist who can repair the thing back. Okay, so patient with pacemaker go inside. Okay, it's completely okay. You need to uh, like uh, 
uh, check their pacemaker whether it's functioning or not and all those things lah. but normally we will advise to not uh, doing MRI with the patient with pacemaker but now won't be a problem because there is a lot of products that uh, MRI compatible okay interesting topic uh, topic okay claustrophobics okay when um mri entered okay so we as a radiographer usually we will in ourselves first that's mean we will lie down on the table and then we will do like oh okay is it okay or not so why we are doing uh, most of my colleague even me i don't have any claustrophobic phobia you know but uh, when i'm inside i feel like very uncomfortable since the gantry okay the yourself okay so you will feel like oh i cannot breathe i feel like i'm in a coffin and all those things okay don't worry that's why i told you communication whatever it is you need to let know because we will operate the mri outside so you are the one inside we will only monitor you by the cctv over there okay so whatever it is you feel uncomfortable when let us know just let us know Okay, so we will see what we can do. If you are claustrophobic and doctor said, no, this patient need to undergo uh, MRI because uh, I really need the MRI. Okay, what we can do? For example, if you, uh, if you want to tell, okay, I feel scared a bit, let me uh, have a look. Okay, you can, we can uh, ask you to lie down and then we can do like a show first. Okay, the whole idea of MRI, you can go inside like for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, see whether you are okay or not before we start the procedure. Okay, another thing. Okay. Some even you can request what music do you want no matter it's english music it's it's mandarin music tamil music or malay music anything but just don't dance over there because uh, um if there is any movement it's artifact so uh, we need to uh, repeat it again okay uh so for those who say like oh i don't want i feel like so uncomfortable i don't music so loud and all those things you can request for ear plug so we will give it to you Okay, so uh, worse come to worse. Like for example, uh, you really can't cooperate. You say I cannot. Okay, you can let the doctor know our uh, the uh, consultant know. You tell doctor, doctor, I have done MRI and I cannot. So can you just put me in a sleep? Okay, so they give you mild sedation so you can sleep while the procedure we will do. Uh, we were done the procedure, so you just sleep. Okay, you, you don't know. You won't open your eye and say, okay, uh, it's so nearer to me. Okay, I feel claustrophobic and all those things. Okay, in case if the, like, um, as I say, the claustrophobic become worse, you really cannot. Okay, then maybe you we can offer um, open MRI. But nowadays, um, open MRI mean the, like, it's more open then uh, it's not like one um, tunnel like that. It's like burger type. But uh, the about the image quality is not as good as uh, the latest MRI. But maybe we can give a try. Maybe doctor can give a suggestion. Or if you really don't want MRI, maybe... MRI. Okay, this is the thing we want to see. Three things. Chamber, valve and vessels. Okay, if you have any problem in your chambers, can be seen. Any valve also can be seen and vessels also can be seen. But you have to remember this is for uh, diagnosis purpose only, not therapeutic. Okay, therapeutic, you still have to go undergo uh, angiography. Okay, so this is how the thing will look, the, pro, the post-processing. Okay, so from this one, we call it like sagittal view. Okay, in this view, you already can see your anterior wall and then your left ventricle. We can see and then uh, we can already see your... Um, This 
view. This is an axial view. Iota, your left atrium, uh, your uh, aortic valve. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, four chamber. Four chamber, that's mean overall we can see everything okay so this one you can see uh your all all your chambers like right ventricle right left atrium left ventricle okay so this uh, my mitral valve okay this all is for uh looking for your iota and valve okay okay before that let me explain to you okay what if uh you are unconscious i mean like for example uh your relative like they want to undergo the mri so they are unconscious that means they cannot respond so how we take the consent form okay first of all now we will ask the guardian or relative so uh in my experience and of I I actually want to advise if you have anything like any uh, problem for for example you have any allergic to drugs allergic to drugs is very important okay or you have any allergic to seafood or anything you can actually we are providing a small card which is uh you you can uh, it's very compatible you can bring it in your wallet you can just put it in your wallet so. Uh, for example, uh, your husband for today. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for Ms. Mojasantini for giving such informative and interesting presentation. Audience, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box and kindly complete the survey form for our quality survey in order to receive the e-certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, now we come to question and answer session. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I've already had a few questions here. Uh, the first question comes from Satya Rubini Satya Silen. Okay, uh, she mentioned that uh, she asked, "Can patient with ICD do MRI?" Okay, uh, so uh, this one you really need to uh, talk to your cardiologist whether they are okay or not uh, during uh, and your radiologist of course. But uh, normally uh, for this kind of patient, we will like uh, we prefer first lah before entering the MRI. Okay. Uh... Thank you for the answer, Ms. Manasantini. So we we'll go to the next question. The second question is from Glody DKB Kakare. Uh, she asks, in our body, we normally have pacemaker, right? So if the patient has an artificial one, cannot do MRI? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Lodi. Actually, uh, artificial, you mean like temporary pacemaker, is it? Okay. Uh, as I told you, uh, pacemaker, uh, normally we advise uh, not to. But if you mean like artificial, means the, any, uh, for example, you fracture your hand, you have any metal inside your body, that one won't be a problem because nowadays we are using titanium. It's not metal basis anymore. Uh, so, no, for the um, uh, pacemaker, usually doctor will give you a cut. It's no matter it's temporary or it's a permanent one. In Inside the cut, there is a brand and they will put it over there. It, it's MRI compatible or not. If the, for example,
Okay, sorry, come back again. Okay, so anyhow, don't worry. Uh, if you have one, just bring the card and then we will uh, consult with our radiologist. Uh, and we will see whether it's compatible or not. But if they, uh, if the MRI is the cut it itself is uh, already told that it's not compatible, usually we won't take the risk because uh, anything can happen during the procedure. So maybe you will suddenly collapse or anything. That's why, as I told you, communication between a radiographer and the patient or guest, you say, it's very, very important. You need to explain to us and tell everything. Another thing, usually uh, people will be very shy to uh, uh, tell about like charm needle, you know, like we call it like suso. Uh, it's actually, I can understand, there is a really really religious thing that uh, we are, like, you know, you cannot really put in charm needle or anything, but it's okay. You need to let us know. If not, we don't know. We have no idea. Once you are in, as I told you, you are all alone. So anything can be happened. So you really have to uh, explain to us and tell us. Okay, I have uh, very good answer from Ms. Mona Santini. Um, are you ready for the next question, Miss Mona? I, yes. Okay. Uh, the question is from Saada Ahmed. Uh, she asks, "What kind of jewelry, jewelry can an MRI tech wear?" Oh, uh, MRI tech means uh, be a radiographer, right? Okay. So nothing that matter. Okay. Usually, for example, if you see my nose ring, okay. Uh, it's actually, uh, it's a goal. If goal, no problem. But if it's a matter, uh, surely the thing will go inside. And then another thing, don't wear weak rambut palsu. I have an experience. I don't know whether we we can laugh. We, at that time, I will, uh, I just laugh. Okay, actually, it's so bad. Okay, don't wear weak. Okay, because weak, I think they stitch it with some kind of metal things. The thing really ha can flew inside the MRI. It's very important. So for MRI tag, uh, and then another thing, your ATM card or any other card with chips, please do not bring inside. And also your shillings, okay? Shillings also can easily go inside the MRI gantry. And uh, as MRI tag, we already educate our nurses, no oxygen tank, no uh, now, what the SPO2 machines, everything will be inside the MRI itself. So they don't have to bring their accessory into the MRI because, you know, once the thing is already attached to the gantry to release the helium to take out the thing, uh, it's really hard, okay? And it's costly too. Okay. Okay, thank you, Monica. Thank you for the answer. So, actually, we have... One, uh, another question from Desmond Ng. He asks, uh, he, is, there high, uh, is there any difference between radiographer and sonographer? Uh, yes, of course, there is a difference between radiographer and sonographer. Okay, a radiographer can become a sonographer. Okay, uh, so it's like this. Radio In radiographer courses, Okay, you will, uh, in your diploma rate, three years, you will mainly, they will cover about radiation, MRI. And okay, you need to do courses uh, so that you can upgrade on your sonographer. Okay, sonographer is... about the prop and all those things. So uh, there is a, a, like extra courses a radiographer can do, but it's not same. A radiographer and sonographer is not same. A sonographer is someone who specialize in ultras, uh, uh, ultrasound. Okay. Okay, thank you for the answer, Ms. Mona Santini. Uh, there is another question for you from okay. Nur Akma Cik Umar. She asked, if patients wear braces, they can have to remove before examination? 
Okay, so uh, let me uh, tell you, even I'm wearing braces. Braces is won't, won't be a problem actually. Uh, braces retainer also won't be a problem, but if it can be removed, it's better to be removed. But if you don't want, for example, you're only doing MRI, lumbar, lumbar usually, lumbar spine, okay, the spine, backbone, okay, usually we will in the leg first. So it won't really be a problem. It depends on which part are you... Um, uh, diagnose you you want to see you want you want to image uh, you want to do the mri but for the cardiac usually we are we were asked to remove all the dentures and all those things because in case anything happen we can't do cpr to you <laughs> okay thank you for the answer i suppose there is another question from Ng shen li she asked may i know the difference between a cardiac mri and angiogram also, is a scheduling necessary for all MRI given its side effects? Okay, so it's a good question. Okay, as okay, uh, cardiac MRI is only diagnosis. That means if you have any stenosis or you have any valve to be repaired, we cannot do anything. It's only a scanning telling that, okay, you have a problem uh, in your chamber, you have a problem in the vessel. Okay, but angiogram can be both. Uh, therapeutic and diagnosis. That means in when you are lying down, doctor flush you with the contrast. Okay, doctor already know there is a stenosis, and on the same time, on the uh, same time, he or also can put you in. Uh, he can repair your vessels like putting balloons, or uh, uh, angioplastic balloons. I mean, like putting uh, angioplastic balloons or stenting or anything. That means angiogram. You can do it like a therapeutic and also diagnosis. Okay, get. Uh, gadolinium necessary for all. Okay, of course, anything, even drugs, we insert in our body. If anything can cause side effects. Depends if, like, for MRI, usually for the only for the. Okay. Yep. But it's much more better we do it in gadolinium. Okay. As I told you, gadolinium, uh, when we insert gadolinium, we won't insert same like CT scan. CT scan like depends. We also same will times your body weights. Okay. Like uh, 70, 80 mil, right? But for this MRI, we won't use that much. We will only use body weight okay but if your kidney function is okay and everything okay so they will they won't have any side effect in case you have a problem and then you want to do but your kidney function is uh, like uh, low your kidney function is not that good we have the procedure to to um, prepare you before the examination we call it like sodium perfusion which uh, we will hydrate your kidney first then we will repeat the blood test and then we will go with the examination okay, okay thank you miss monam satini for the answer and ladies and gentlemen we have finally come to the end part of this seminar out of this webinar before i close the webinar i would like to take the conclusion from what the speakers have presented the MRI diagnosis is the most reliable method to detect any related heart disease so awareness on the procedure is crucial uh, I would like to brief you again about the medical, medical imaging course the diploma and bachelor degree honors created by the MQA offered uh, by, uh, in MASA you can get more information by searching www.masa.edu.my or our faculty social media. I would like to thank so much to the speakers for informative and interesting presentation and to the participants for very active participation. Hopefully, the webinar will be beneficial, beneficial for everybody. I mean, and thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.